Right now, our medical heroes continue to bravely stand between us and coronavirus. Yeah, they've been working around the clock, all the while scared of what they might bring home or get themselves. Well, today, you may have seen this. Charlotte said a big thank you. This is fabulous. This is wonderful. Yeah, a parade of lights and sirens weaving all through the Uptown Charlotte area. A show of report for all those first responders, doctors, and staff members working to save lives. Channel 9's Mark Becker is joining us. And Mark, you, you saw this in person. How would you describe it? Yes, yeah, Scott, after all of the tough things we've had to report over the last month and a half, and there have been a lot, it was pretty cool, really, to see a parade of, they call the parade of lights, of the people we've come to call heroes, driving down the main road here into Atrium's Hospital in Dilworth to honor our new heroes. In fact, for about 10 minutes, a steady stream of police, fire trucks, and sheriff deputies, and other first responders rode by here slowly, many of them waving at the line of nurses, doctors, and other hospital staff who were lining the street. It was their way of saying thanks to all the people here at the hospital and at other hospitals for what they've done during the coronavirus outbreak. And many of those who were being honored told us they never expected anything like this. And it's hard to get used to being called a hero. But this is definitely encouraging. It definitely gives us strength to keep moving and we will get through this. Yeah, use this the other way around, but we all in this together. You know? Are you heroes? I don't think we can I can say we're heroes, but I think we all heroes. The medics, everybody who working, we all heroes. And from here that motorcade, that parade went over toward Novant's main hospital and to Mercy, also a hospital involved or connected to Atrium. They really did want to let the people working here know how much they thank and appreciate everything that's been done. Scott? Yeah, Mark, and uh, I know we all agree that uh, we want to, of course, show our gratitude for them. Uh, they're the ones out there. Uh, you're in the street. Me and Erica are here in the studio. They actually have to run toward people who are sick and help right. them out. So, again, they've got a big thumbs up. And yeah, a thank we you from appreciate us, right, Erica? them. We'd like to join in our community's gratitude for our health care heroes. Uh, thank you for risking your lives, risking your own health, and missing time from home and your own families to help us through this time. We got some breaking news coming in within the past 60 minutes. Governor Roy Cooper is forcing any open essential business, any stores, to take more steps now to keep all of us safe. Starting on Monday at 5 p.m., stores will not be allowed to allow in more than five people for every 1,000 square feet. The governor's new order will also require six feet of social distance inside stores, frequent cleaning and disinfecting, adding shields at the registers and making the aisles one way. Previously, this was all uh, suggested, but now this is going to be mandated. Now we turn to a terrifying reality that far too many families are living right now. Millions of families who don't know anyone who has it are hurting nonetheless. The numbers out today show that 6.6 .6 million people applied for unemployment benefits, and that means a total of 16.8 million people who've lost their jobs since this started. That's one in 10 workers. Well, job losses are really just the tip of the iceberg, though, when it comes to the fallout from all of this. Let's join Channel 9's Dave Faraday now and Ken Lemon. They're teaming up today, finding those everyday families who say they're worried they're slipping through the cracks. Let's go ahead and start with our Ken Lemon. Yeah, and Scott, Laura Moore is one of those 16 million. She never thought she'd see an unemployment office again. One month ago, she was at a pivotal junction, a turnaround from a setback that would have been difficult for most people to get beyond. In November 2018, Laura's eight-year-old son died of a fire at her home in Shelby. Her younger son was badly burned. 2019 was a hard year, but in December, things started to get a little bit better. When she started a new job at a restaurant at Charlotte Douglas Airport, uh, the following month, her son, who survived that fire, was well enough to start school. And in March, she and her children moved out of her mother's house and into a home of their own in Kings Mountain. But right after that, she was furloughed. She filed for unemployment and learned that because she hadn't paid enough into the system over the last two quarters, she couldn't get help, the help that she needed as her family made that pivotal turn for the better. It's tragic because 
we've 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 all suffered enough just like so many other people and now we're suffering even more and now she's faced with those major questions here and that is how can something like this happen and what if anything can people do to help questions that we look into in a story that we're working on for six o'clock tonight scott all right, we'll check back in with you at six. Ken, thanks very much. Um, we know a lot of people are losing their jobs and there's a really fast growing need for food donations that people can come and get who need it. Uh, this is the response at a food donation site this morning. People lined up an hour before they were open just to make sure they were able to get home with some food. Well, the Catawba County School System, which gave away that food, was overwhelmed within just a few minutes out there. Our Dave Faraday says the food boxes have to feed families over spring break when kids would not normally get a lunch. Well, the cars stretched across the parking lot here at Blackburn Elementary this morning. The families that arrived early, they received boxes just like this one, filled with 20 lunches and 20 breakfasts to help them get through spring break. Employees at Blackburn Elementary near Newton began passing out the boxes shortly after 8 this morning. The meals include waffles, pancakes, sausages, chicken, hamburgers, pork chops, and vegetables. All of it in an effort to help families who are out of work and need help in Catawba County. I work in a nonprofit, so this is great to see that the need is being met and this response is here. The food giveaway is nicknamed the Spring Break Grab and Go Care Packages. Employees at 15 schools across the county tried to help as many families as possible. Across the foothills, thousands have been laid off or furloughed because of COVID-19. It's been wonderful for us. We've, uh, it's been tight, our staff, but it's been wonderful. Everybody's pitching in, doing everything together. In a little over an hour, all the boxes were gone. Blackburn Elementary was the pickup site for several of the schools in the western part of Catawba County. The principal directed families to other schools, but they too started to run out. Many of the families we spoke with told us they weren't disappointed. No. No, well, they can only do so much. And the employees here at Blackburn Elementary tell me that they passed out more than 3,800 meals. The families that didn't get those boxes, they were able to receive free lunches for their children here. Back to you. All right, everybody doing their part. Um, neighbors helping neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in Union County, uh, they've got their first death to report. Now, a patient who was living in a skilled nursing facility passed away. Stanley County is also reporting its first death today. There are now more than 3,600 cases in North Carolina and 65 deaths. It is a growing concern. More COVID-19 cases are being discovered inside our nursing homes and long-term care facilities. It was just yesterday that Mecklenburg County said that there are now two outbreaks in the county, but we're learning now it doesn't end there. The CDC doesn't really track outbreaks in nursing homes, but North Carolina does. And right now they have 16 outbreaks statewide. They're in Burke, Cabarrus, Cleveland, Mecklenburg, and Rowan counties. Genevieve Curtis is live in Mint Hill tonight and Genevieve in the past hour, Governor Cooper, uh, as we heard, ordered some new rules to try to make those nursing homes safer. Yes, Scott, as we know, our seniors and our elderly population are especially vulnerable to COVID-19, and that's why so many long-term care facilities like Mint Hill Senior Living have decided to start screening their employees before they come into work. This is actually something they've been doing for quite a while now, and they tell me about a week ago, a worker here at the facility did come in, was showing symptoms, and they were sent home right away. They've been in self-quarantine and have not been tested for coronavirus, but today, Governor Cooper is recommending now that all nursing homes be testing all of their workers before they come in. We had some pushback from it at first. Back in early March, when Affinity Living Group stopped letting visitors come to their assisted living facilities, family members weren't happy. But Jaylee Wilson believes that's what's kept hundreds of residents safe so far and helped them get ahead of the curve. We were able to implement ahead of time, which I think really helped us. Um, we re-educated our staff on infection control. We made sure that they had the PPE that they needed. Affinity manages almost 100 assisted living communities in North Carolina, and only one, Cherry Springs Village Hill in Hendersonville, has an outbreak with 23 confirmed cases. In March, the group also started taking temperatures. We also, um, at the beginning of March, started screening our staff.
um, before the beginning of each shift. So if they were symptomatic in any way, they were sent home to self-quarantine. So I think that made a huge impact on um, you know the overall success that we've had so far. And late this afternoon, the governor ordered all nursing homes to screen employees and residents for symptoms. He also ordered them to stop any dining or group activities in common spaces and for employees to wear face masks. Wilson says the key for long-term care facilities is communication with their staff, with their residents, and with their families as information about coronavirus continues to change. They're also focused on keeping residents connected to their loved ones while keeping them at a safe distance. We care for these residents because they once cared for us and these staff have the most important job. They're also making sure that any health care providers that come into the community have full PPE, and they're also making sure that they have a change of clothes. Back to you. Yeah, all safety measures that they have to take and hope they can stop some of these outbreaks. Genevieve, thank you. And speaking of that, uh, cases at a nursing home in Morganton are rising. There are now more than two dozen residents and workers sick with the virus there. The Burke County Health Department saying to Channel 9 that there are eight additional cases just to a report today, all at Grace Heights Health and Rehab Center. The total number is 28 there now. That includes 16 residents and 12 employees at the nursing home. And to our east, two care facilities in Orange County have a big flare up, 90, almost 90 cases. Now, they include residents and staff as well. And in Moore County, a rehab center has 29 cases, again, both among residents and staff members. The number of cases growing in South Carolina tonight, nearly 2,800 cases in the Palmetto State, including 120 in York County, 51 in Lancaster County, and sadly, 67 lives lost to date. Uh, we want to continue to give you perspective on how many people have actually recovered, uh, but at this time we don't have those numbers locally, but we do have some of them nationally. This is a live look from the tracker at Johns Hopkins University, taking a look across the country, across the world. Um, you can see nearly 25,000 people across the country who have recovered uh, far more than those lives lost. Now, another local first responder has tested positive. This is a daily event now. The Monroe Fire Department says a firefighter was recently exposed to someone who later tested positive. After being notified about that, the firefighter was tested and the result was positive. They say all staff members exposed to the firefighter are being tested as well, but the results so far have come back negative. 